Listen, we all know that the music industry has struggled for decades when it comes to properly recognizing and respecting black artists. This insidious racism involves things like restricting black musicians to certain genres, as well as refusing to award them even though they frequently outperform their peers. And this inequity needs to be called out. Today I'm joined by singer, songwriter, and producer Barty Strange to discuss anti-blackness in the music industry. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm pumped to be here. I love The Root. I've been reading it for many, many, many years and have interacted with The Root in many capacities. So I'm pumped to be here. Shout out to you. You released your debut album, Live Forever, in 2020, and it receives all this type of acclaim. Um, but despite its success, do you feel like it was harder for you to make it in rock music because you're a Black artist? You know, in my early 20s, I, I truly didn't believe that it would be possible for me to have a career in music. There weren't a lot of examples of people who had done it that looked like me. And the ones that had, I felt like they had these uphill battles that were just like so brutal. Yes, there were so many challenges because I was black, but once I started on the path, I met so many people that looked like me who were just like, yes, like we need to support this guy because he could get eaten alive otherwise. Why do you think certain people and institutions in the industry are so quick to relegate Black artists to the genres of either hip hop or R&B? I think just because it's easy. Like, I, I always think about like bigotry and laziness as like cousins, where it's like a lot of people, I wouldn't know if I'd call them racist. I would just say, oh, they're kind of lazy. Like, they don't want to take that one extra step to see that this works, you know? It's like, it's easier to rely on the, the the stories you tell yourself sometimes. And I feel like now there are so many examples of black artists who are so much bigger than a single genre that I've, I honestly, I feel lucky to be making music in a world where there's like a Nas X and a Doja Cat and a Tyler the Creator. And these people who look at ev the whole world of sound and music and see themselves in all of it and command all of it so beautifully. So when I meet people who want to relegate me into a box, I feel like there's so much like, what would the right word be? There are so many examples that there's more that I, you know, I'm able to lean back on and like challenge what they think is reality with actual reality, you know? What I love about your catalog is that you don't dilute your blackness for white audiences. We hear it on songs like Hold the Line, which is dedicated to the daughter of George Floyd. Can't imagine what's running through a young man now. Again, you've taken something of mine. Why is this important to you? Because I'm black. And I'm from the, you know, I'm from the South and all my folks, you know, are black Southern people, you know, and like, I make music from that perspective, you know, as a, I grew up in Western Oklahoma and North Carolina, my family's from South Carolina, Texas, you know, it's like the world I grew up in is, is, is so deeply ingrained in me. What do you want to tell other black artists who are currently dealing with the same kind of racism and bigotry you've encountered? The challenges for all of us are so great. <laughs> like there are so many ways for it to not work. But the thing I would say is like, for everyone you look up to, there's a very unique story and path for them to where to how they got where they are. It's like, your pathway will also be unique and different than everybody else's too. So it's like, just cause you haven't seen what you wanna be, or just because you're not sure how to get there doesn't mean it's not possible. You just have to build it your own way. Off the radio, your favorite artist comes on, you want to record it, make a little mixtape. Who's on that mixtape? Thong Song um, by Cisco. That was like one of my favorite songs as a kid. I remember feeling so guilty because my parents are so Christian and I just remember being like, this is the greatest piece of music I've ever heard. <laughs> like when he's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, I just remember being like, whoa, <laughs> it's amazing, Drew Hill is the greatest, you know, so I loved that. I had my little recorder, I would just record like the entire radio broadcast for the day that would work for like as much time as I had. I think I had like 32 minutes or something. And then I would run it all back and just like 
listen to it over and over again. Like that was like my favorite thing. Cause I just wanted to hear songs over and over. Like I kind of hated that the song would go away. And so that was my favorite stuff to do. I think like general advice for artists of color or of varying gender identities coming up in this world of music. It's like, everyone's gonna hate you and then everyone's gonna want a piece of you. And then everyone's gonna want you to just give so much of yourself. And you need people around you who are like you to remind you of who you are. And so that after all the touring and all the stuff, you have a crew of people that you can look at that you know know you. Because that's the big, biggest challenge is like, you tour, you play 130 shows in a year, 200 shows in a year, like all over the world, like you get home, like home feels different, like family's different, so much has happened. And no one can really relate to you because you just did something that no one gets. So if you can have some people around you who can ground you and make you feel like you have a home, like that's gonna save your life, you know? So like, make sure you have that. Have some people that know you, that look like you, smell like you, talk like you, from where you're from, know what's going, you know, so you're gonna need that.